Well, Razorback fans, it's a Tuesday, so we're going to make it a top Tuesday, especially with fall camp coming up. The top three things to look forward to this upcoming fall camp for the Arkansas Razorbacks. It's all coming up on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's had been a wonderful Tuesday. As again, we're in the early part of August, which we know that this week, Razorback Fall Camp is going to be starting up officially. We'll get to hear from Sam Pittman, hopefully some coordinators, hopefully some coaches, hopefully some players. Really get to dive into all the stuff that's going on uh, in Razorback Athletics. And particularly, of course, Razorback football, I should say. And it'll be fun. It'll be fun to see exactly how it all goes down and the approach that's taken. And, you know, last year, even there were still some COVID protocols here and there. But uh, overall, it's uh, it's definitely a really cool thing to finally be here and finally be able to talk about it. Well, and I thought this was a perfect opportunity because it's like it's a Tuesday and football is on the minds of a lot of Razorback fans, especially with fall camp. So I figured I would utilize this day to talk about the top three things I'm looking forward to this fall camp. Now, when I'm saying my top three, doesn't mean it's going to be your top three. Some of you may care a lot about the kicking game, which is fine <laughs> if you do. Uh, a lot of you may care about you know how the tight ends are going to look, and that might be the number one thing that you're looking at, and that's fine too. Like. There's not a wrong or right answer to this answer to this question because I think everybody in their own right looks for something different. But for my top three, there's a few things that I'm going to be looking at because of maybe how it looked last year, maybe how it needs to change, whatever it may be. And especially with some of these things that I don't feel like gets talked about enough. And I maybe and I'm one to blame on all that because it's this is my podcast. Like I maybe I don't talk enough about it either. But either way, there are some things that I feel like people need to watch for and not just in general, but like very specific, like diving into the details of all those things. So kind of looking at the number three thing that I feel like Arkansas is going to be uh, needing to have or at least be interesting to have and people need to look at it once you get to see the practices and see the clips and see everything and hear from coaches and all that is going to be the mentality of the team coming off of last season. Now, this one's like might be a little bit more difficult to look at because it's not like something you can just read on a piece of paper and say, oh, well, this is the mentality. Or that you can really even see and play out there on the practice field and say, well, this is the mentality that they have. And I'm like, well, okay, well, good. Well, then now we know the mentality that they have. It's good to go. It's tough to exactly pinpoint and to see, especially when you have a team of, 85 to 100 players out there with new coaches that are in place, like all of those things mixed together, it might be tough to do. But there might be particular examples or particular things that you can look at and also things that you can hear from coaches in the press conferences that may give you a little bit of a hint as to what this team's feeling, how they're what they're going through, and the type of mentality that they have. And the reason that it's so important this year is because Arkansas – is coming off of their best season since 2011. You're talking about 10 years. Last year was their best season since the Bobby. Like, no Brad B. Loma season beat last year. We know no Chad Morris season. No John L. Smith. Like, it was a decade since you're coming off of a season like you had in 2011. And I would even say it's different. Maybe 2010 would be a better example. Because after 2011, when you went to the new year, you had a new coach because of the John L. Smith angle and Bobby Petrino and all that, where it's kind of the opposite, where not only you're coming off that big year, but you kept all your coaches, essentially, all your coordinators, you're keeping your quarterback and everything to go along with it. So you could probably make the argument that it's a little bit different than what it was back then, but still, you're coming off in an incredible year, an incredible year where the mentality has to be ultra-focused than maybe what it previously was. If you look at 
what Arkansas was kind of going through in the first years of Sam Pittman in the first spring practices. I know he didn't have spring practices first year, but spring practices, fall camp, whatever. It was kind of this mentality of, hey, it's us against the world. Everyone's doubting us. Nobody believes in us. We're picked to finish last. No one thinks we're any good. Yada, 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 all of that. And that was probably something that fueled this team into their focus of saying, well, we're going to go out and we're going to prove ourselves and we're going to show the world that we're not just a bunch of bums that don't know how to win football games. And they did. They went out last year. And not only did they win football games, but they surpassed pretty much everybody's expectations to where suddenly they were a top 10 team at one point last year. They finished in the top 25 and people, as in the media, picked them to finish third in the SEC West at SEC media days. So there's no longer this idea of people doubting you, people putting you down, people thinking you suck. None of that. Now it becomes. You are the team that everyone's seeing and thinking, wow, this could be a team that could really get something going here. Like they surprised us all last year and with what all they have coming back and with the mentality and the culture that Sam Pittman's built, this could be something that could actually build into something really good. So let's let's start think, let's start picking Arkansas to do some upsets. Let's start picking Arkansas to finish high in the SDC West. Let's start picking these players to be all SEC players and whatnot. Like everybody started going through that and started picking them and started believing in them. And it's great because as a Razorback fan, you want to have that recognition. And I'm sure the team does too, but you're not sneaking up on anybody now. Like you're not going to be going into this year and into all these games where people are thinking, well, it's Arkansas. We should beat them. You're not doing that anymore. You're going to be a perennial top 25 team. You're going to be a perennial team that everyone's going to look at and say, this is going to be a tough bout. This is going to be a tough game. We're going to have to bring our A game in order to beat this team. So how are you approaching that this fall camp compared to where you were last fall camp? Are you feeling yourself too much? Are you thinking that, hey, well, you know, look, look how great we were last year. We're going to be great again this year. You know, you have the mentality just assuming that everything's going to be great. And you're going to be even better because, hey, you know, we were Arkansas. Look what we did. We won nine games last year. We can do that again this year. No problem. Hopefully that's not the mentality they're having. And I'm sure that Sam Pittman is really hammering that point home to where he wanted to make sure that everybody understands, hey, last year was great, but this is a whole new season. And we have a lot of new teams to play. And we're going to have to once again bring our A game each and every game in this conference, in this division, if we want to have any sort of success. I am sure that's what Sam Pittman is doing, so I have no doubt about that. But just knowing that what this team went through and what a lot of these players on this team went through under Chad Morris, for them to sniff and to get a little taste of that high-level success where everybody is just fla flaunting over you, just couldn't, wow, you guys are great. Sam Pittman is the darling of the SEC. He's such a nice guy. Everybody loves him. Uh, you know, it, like people are going to buy into that. People are going to believe in that. Is the team believing in it, though? Are they reading their headlines? Are they seeing all these things that people are saying about them? Are they listening to this podcast as I'm sitting over here telling everybody they're going to go 10 and 2? Like, are they letting that sink, sink into what their mentality is this fall camp? That'll be interesting. And, and again, if you're looking at the indicators to come from, because I know we're not going to be able to watch every single practice. Like, I know that. But the great thing about Sam Pittman is, yes, there are things that he will not say as a coach. Like, he doesn't really dive into injuries and all that stuff. Like, it's just a, it's, it's a choice there. But one thing I've always believed with Sam Pittman is that he'll come out and just say, hey, we're not doing too hot right now. Or we're, we're I don't like the way practice went. I don't like the the headspace of where this team's at, or, uh, you know, we needed, we needed to have some more focus than what we had today. He will say those things. And if he says those things, we may have a good indication of what the mentality is, but he could go a different direction too, where he comes out and says, I'm loving where we're at. This is incredible. I mean, I have not had a fall camp like this since I've been here. These guys are doing exactly what we want them to do in the way that they're wanting to do it. And they're getting it done. This this is where we need to be, and we have a lot of confidence in him. He could say that, too. 
And if he does, that's that's going to be a dangerous team to have to deal with. So that's the number three thing I'm going to be looking forward to this fall camp is the mentality of this team coming off of a major successful season. As you gear up this fall, or you need to have the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people that you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes with LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help find you the right people that you need to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with the, just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and who you'd like to hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on with a top Tuesday, the top three reasons, or the top three things, I should say, of uh, what I'm looking forward to uh, this upcoming fall camp. Uh, the first one we talked about is the mentality of this team. The second thing, I should say the third thing. Then the second thing, because I like to do the countdown, three, two, one. I don't know, it's just the way to do it. But either way, uh, the third thing that I'm going to be looking forward to the most is how the wide receivers are working with K.J. Jefferson. Now, I know that people may say, hey, the defensive line is, is very important, which I agree 100%. It is very important. Some of you may look at other position groups as being important. But to me, the wide receiver position and the connection and the ability that they have with K.J. Jefferson is really going to be such a difference maker for this team. Because, yes, the defensive line is another concern that I have. And without a good defensive line, you're, you're going to have issues. You may have issues and struggle a little bit and all that. But last year, you know, Arkansas, besides Ridgeway, did not have a great offense defensive line, and their defense was still really good because of the back seven that they had. So that can make up for a lot. But in the offense, if you do not have a passing game, a legitimate passing threat, especially, it doesn't matter what you do offensively or how good your running game is going to be. If you don't have that other threat, people are going to shut you down. And so that's why the wide receiver position is going to be so, so important. Uh, this upcoming year to the success of Arkansas. And they don't have Traylon Burks. We all know that. But if you just go through the wide receivers that are currently on the roster and, and looking at who they have, Keetron Jackson, you know, player that was a four-star player coming out of high school. He's going to be a sophomore this year. Matt Landers, uh, the transfer out of Toledo, started his uh, career at Georgia, 6'5", a big guy. Jaden Hazelwood, the transfer out of Oklahoma, former five-star. You got Jaquelin Crawford who is uh, also a uh, transfer from, uh, I believe it was Oklahoma, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, yeah, he's going to be back. You got Jaden Wilson, Bryce Stevens, Landon Rogers, uh, Isaiah Satania, who a lot of people are high on as a true freshman, Sam Mbake and Quincy McAdoo, true freshman, five four-star guys. Uh, Chris Harris, Warren Thompson, a big-time returner from last year. They got a lot of run. Harper Cole uh, and Cameron Bibby. So there's a few of those guys that may not play and may, and may not really – I uh, have a lot going on for them, at least uh, via the team this year. But there are some names that you are absolutely aware of. And it's going to be a matter of, all right, who's the returner? Who's the big-time newcomer? And who's going to be the young guy that steps up? Because I feel like with that type of three-dimensional wide receiver group, you can kind of help pinpoint exactly the type of impact that some of these guys may be able to have. And I look at the guy that's going to be returning from this past team and the and importance that he's going to have. And to me, it's Warren Thompson. Now, there were times last year where Warren Thompson struggled a little bit, uh, but he really came into his own. In fact, he played in all 13 games last year. He had three starts uh, last year as well. Caught 19 passes for 304 yards and two touchdowns and recorded at least one catch in 10 games and filled six consecutive games with one catch. So he was a guy that, of course, uh, was another transfer from last year, but Someone like him is so important to where you have a quarterback 
who where KJ was obviously comfortable enough to throw him some passes and he had some big passes. I mean, he made a big play in that Alabama game uh, and has a lot of uh, a lot of ability there as well. He was huge. And so I believe that someone like him is going to be what really helps out this team and helps out KJ Jefferson, at least in the early goings. You're going to have to build some of that chemistry and build some of that rapport with these other wide receivers as the season goes on. But having someone like Warren Thompson, who was in every game last year, who played in every game last year, who was a guy who caught a lot of passes last year, he's going to be vital, especially in the early part of the year. So look for him, not only in fall camp, to really uh, be that guy and be that, uh, I don't want to call it a safety net, but just to be that guy that really does a lot of good things with K.J. Jefferson in fall camp, and they have that maybe his go-to wide receiver at this point in time. Uh, he's the guy that is returning. The newcomer, or at least the big-time transfer, that everyone's been looking at, including myself, is going to be Jaden Hazelwood. Now, I feel kind of bad for this guy in a way, and he, it's not like he needs my sympathy, but – there's just been so much expectation put on him that people are saying, all right, well, you lost Traylon Burks. Okay, you're going to have to make up for the production. That's unfair. That's not going to happen. That should not be expected out of him at all. But the fact is, is that he was a former five-star player coming out of high school. He played at Oklahoma. He played in all 12 games of the regular season, catching a team-best 39 passes for 400 yards and a team-leading six touchdowns. So you're talking about a guy that in an Oklahoma offense under Lincoln Riley which we know is so pass heavy and is always so good when it comes to uh, getting their wide receivers in space. He was, a, he was the guy who led the team in receptions and in touchdowns at Oklahoma. So if he can do that at Oklahoma, there's no reason that he can't do it here at Arkansas. There's no reason where he can't step in right in and be a guy that immediately has an impact on Arkansas and the wide receiver group. And the thing is, is that they're going to have to be able to count on it. Like they're going to have to be able to not only have him be a guy that you know picks up a little bit of the slack from last year in production wise, but maybe even be the guy that leads this team in receptions and ends up being that go-to guy over the top uh, who makes plays, especially against some really good teams. There may be a little bit of adjustment heading into the SEC. I think there's always going to be that adjustment. You know, people can say whatever they want, but. Uh, there is that element to it. It's not a falsehood. It's not something that just doesn't exist. Like there are actually things that go on with this team and with the SEC that makes it uh, a pretty tough change there as well. And the other player uh, that I'm going to be looking forward to, and this is the young guy that we're talking about in our 3D, three-dimensional wide receiver crew, is Isaiah Centania. Now, you may say, oh, okay, because he's a Fayetteville kid and I'm a Fayetteville kid. No, I'm not just saying that. I'm telling you right now that he's 5'11", he's a true freshman. But for everybody that I've spoken to and talked to about this kid, his speed is next level. And I feel like that is something that Arkansas has truly missed at the wide receiver position for a long time. It's just an overall speed guy. Like I know Traylon Burks had it. So I'm not, I'm talking about a guy that like the Joe Adams, like the Jarius Wright, like that player to where you just throw the ball, they get it into their hands and they may catch it two yards past the line of scrimmage and they turn it into a 28 yard game. Like that type of player. And from what I've been hearing, Isaiah is that guy. He's that dude. He has all world speed. And even though he may not be a big guy at 5'11", but he makes up for it where, hey, just give him a little screen pass, give him a little uh, quick out, whatever it is. Just get the ball in his hands and let him take care of the rest. That is something that I feel like can really help out KJ. And that is something that I'm really going to be looking at and the possibility of how it looks with KJ in fall camp. Because we know, again, quarterbacks always have their go-to guys that they like to go to for obvious reasons. And we have, they may have a comfort level. But if there's a guy like this that's a burner, that's a speedster, does he need to run the perfect routes? Does he need to go out there and you know beat their man one-on-one -on -one and all of that? I don't know. I don't think so. Especially as a true freshman, that's a lot to ask. But the freshman group is always a lot easier to adjust at the wide receiver position than pretty much every other position. So just get the ball into this guy's hands, and I want to see what he can do. I want to see it in fall camp when it all comes down to it. When is he going to be that speedster, that burner, that guy that we've all been looking forward to, that, the guy that we've all been uh, trying to uh, see if we can finally get a glimpse of? That's going to be important. So the number two thing I'm looking forward to the most in this fall camp is seeing how the wide receivers, and especially some of the guys that are going to be counted on the most, handle and deal with K.J. Jefferson. 
I got to tell you about Built Bar. If you haven't tried the Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of the life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor, and it is the indulgent cookie dough. Cookie dough is the best. I, I love cookie dough. I've always loved cookie dough. Chocolate chip cookie dough has been my favorite ice cream. And now the fact that they put it in a Built Bar Puff, it's the best one yet. It's only 160 calories and has a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. And if you run over to Built.com, you can see not only the great cookie dough flavors that they have, but also all the delicious flavors that they have to choose from. And because you listen to this podcast, you get a great deal. If you go to built.com, enter in promo code LOCKED15, you get 15% off your next order. Doesn't matter how many you order. Doesn't matter which ones you get. Just load up that cart with Built Bar and then enter in promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off over at built.com. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so Top Tuesday, and we've been talking about the top things, top three things to look for this fall camp. And this is this was one that I feel like is pretty obvious, so it may not be like really all world crazy, like blowing your mind. Uh, but to me, the number one thing that I'm going to be looking for this fall camp is how the newcomers are adjusting. There are a lot of great players that are returning from last year's team to this year's team. KJ Jefferson is one of them. Bumper Pool is one of them. Jalen Catalan is one of them. Ricky Stromberg is one of them. Rocket Sanders, Dominic Johnson, those guys are really good. You know, there's a lot of guys that are coming back that are going to be pivotal to the success of this year's team. But the success is only going to take them so far if these newcomers that have come in, whether the transfers, JUCO guys, whoever, the success is only going to take them so far with those guys not being able to bring it. Now, there's some guys that you may not have to rely on immediately. There may be some guys that are going to be on the team and may not find a spot. They're, they're, that's just going to be the fact of the matter. But if you're talking about guys like a Drew Sanders, who transferred from Alabama and is looking to be the linebacker, the guy immediately on this team, you're looking at a guy like a Dwight McLaughlin, a cornerback from LSU, transferring in, former four-star and a guy that played in every single game for LSU last year. Or Brini, the transfer from Georgia, played and started in almost every game for Georgia last year. Or Jaden Hazelwood, as we mentioned, kid from Oklahoma, former five-star, a transfer, led the team and the Sooners last year in receptions and in touchdowns. Guys like that, those guys are going to be the ones that have to step up in the biggest way this year, not saying to fill the gaps, not saying to fill the void that has been left by the people that were here last year. I'm talking about progressing and being even better than those guys from last year. Drew Sanders being even better than what Grant Morgan was able to provide. Dwight McLaughlin, those guys being even better, and Breeny being even better than what guys like Buster Brown or Joe Fouché or Greg Brooks were able to offer. Jay Nasewood being even better than what Traylon Burks was able to offer, which, again, I'm not trying to compare. I'm not trying to say it. My point is, is that if this team wants to continue to build upon the great year that they had this past year and continue to move forward, those are the pieces that are going to have to come into play and immediately be impacts to make this team pick up right where they left off and continue to move forward. I think that you're going to get a better K.J. Jefferson this year. I think you're going to get the better running backs this year. I think you're going to get Catalan when he's fully healthy, uh, as good as he's ever been. I think Bumper Pool is going to be laser-focused and going to be great for Arkansas. I think all of these players that are returning from last year that were starters and that are going to be starters again this year are going to be just as good, if not better. They're going to be able to do their job. Can the newcomers come in and build upon the same thing? Can they get up right into the same mix? Can they? pick up right where those other guys left off and build upon this team and build upon this snowball effect that they're trying to have where it keeps getting bigger and better and greater and faster heading into the season. That's going to be the ultimate key. I think it's possible. I think it can happen. And of course, only thing that matters is once the games actually come into play. 
But practices are going to be extremely important too. How are they doing with the playbook? Is it taking them a little bit longer to adjust? Are they having issues breaking into that starting rotation? You know, things like that. How are they going to be impacted to choosing this new team in Arkansas? Are they going to be able to catch up right where so many people left off from last year? That's going to be the ultimate question to me. And I don't like putting pressure on people, but there's a lot of pressure on them. That's why Sam Pittman brought him in. You know, he didn't bring him in to develop. He brought him in to fill gaps, to fill voids, to be able to just place him in and say, all right, let's go get him. That's what they've been brought in for. And I even mentioned Matt Landers, another guy that I think a wide receiver is going to be really big too. But these are the guys that you're going to have to count on to be able to bring it, to help out if you want to be able to have a better season than what you did last year. I think all of them are perfectly capable of it. In fact, I would even make an argument that the majority of these big-time transfers that they brought in are upgrades at the position, just being honest, or at least just as good at the minimum. So those are the things that you can get excited about. But I want to see how these guys are going through fall camp and how it's developing, how it's helping them out. Are they doing the right things? Are they being guys that can just step right in and be better or be a, a team player, buying in? How are they doing in the locker room? Like all those things, that to me is going to be the most important thing. So there you have it. Those are the top three things here on a top Tuesday that I'm going to be looking forward to the most this upcoming fall camp. Appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. If you also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have, we'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you.